Hi, I'm Volusia County Community Information Director Joanne Magley, and on today's Volusia Magazine, we are talking trash and recycling. We'll take you from curbside pickup to the solid waste and recycling facility, and then back home to talk about effective ways to help our environment. That's all next on Volusia Magazine. So with me in the studio today, we have Regina Montgomery. She is the director of the county's Solid Waste and Recycling Division, and we also have Jacqueline Kerr. She is with Gel Recycling. Hello to both of you. Hello, Hello. Joe. Thank you for being here. So when it comes to keeping our community and our environment healthy, one of the important steps is what we call the three R's, reduce, reuse, and recycle. And for this segment, we're gonna focus on the recycling part. So Regina, walk us through the recycling process in general for residents here in Volusia County. Sure, Joanne. The county provides residential curbside recycling to over 46,000 households in the unincorporated section of Volusia County. Each resident is given two bins. One is for their paper products such as newspaper, cardboard, snack boxes, and the other bin is for their commingled containers such as aluminum steel cans, plastic bottles, and glass bottles. And so then the, the residents will put their items in the bin and then the, uh, the service provider will pick them up and take them to the recycling plant. So uh, Jacqueline, once the items are brought to the recycling center, walk us through the next steps there. So the material is brought to our recycling facility and we use electronic, manual, and optical sorting to sort the material into separate materials. The material runs through conveyor belts that is lined with equipment and employees in order to sort the material and to remove contaminants from the material. And so um, we'll get to the, I the specific items in a minute, but recently there have been a lot of changes in the recycling market. Uh, items that used to be uh, have a higher demand in aftermarket um, no longer do. So talk about the changes overall, like throughout the United States and really the world of changes recently in that market. So in January of 2018, China implemented a national sword policy where they put a ban on mixed plastics and mixed papers coming into their country due to contamination. That ban has increased the supply of recycled material all over the world. So this has caused us to because basically a lot of, I mean, China was taking a lot of the world's recyclables and, and processing over there, now they've stopped. So now you have these areas all over that just have this abundance of materials. And so now it's kind of making us have to change the way we're having our recycle program. So Regina, because of these changes, um, we have to do something different here with the county of Volusia and in the unincorporated or unincorporated areas, how we deal with those goods. So talk about the changes that we're gonna unroll here in um, Volusia County for the unincorporated areas. Yes, Joanne, we're going to eliminate what we call wishful recycling, where we can recycle pretty much everything, put it in the bin and it'll get recycled. Unfortunately, we're gonna go back to the ba basics and recycle um, your normal products such as newspaper, snack boxes, cardboard. We do need residents to flatten that to no larger than four by four so it fits in the truck. And then on the co-mingled side, we're gonna continue recycling glass bottles, clean brown, amber, even blue. And we're going to limit the plastic bottles to those with the number one and number two recycling system symbols. So when you say wishful recycling, basically what that means is a lot of times uh, people, they may not know if something uh, has the recycle symbol on it. Maybe they can't see it or can't tell. Uh, so in wishful recycling thinking, they'll put it in the bin. But um, Jacqueline, tell us what the consequences are of putting things in the bin that are not meant to be 
or can't be recycled. So like I said, we have a equipment that recycle that processes the material, it stops our equipment up, our employees, it takes longer for our employees to clean the material and if there's something that's contaminated that's coming across a conveyor belt line, you might have to throw away actual recyclable material because it was contaminated by something else that was put into the bin. So so just that step of thinking you're doing something good and then actually having a number of other items that now can't be recycled, I don't think people are really aware when they're doing that, but uh, that's one of the educational components that we're hoping to get out once we roll out these changes is helping people understand the more of the do's and don'ts of recycling. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to actually show you the items that you can recycle and items that you should not recycle. We'll be right back. Stay connected with the latest Volusia County news events and updates on our social media channels. Like and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Catch up with previous stories on YouTube or just head over to our website, volusia.org. Hi and welcome back. We are joined in the studio today with Regina Montgomery. She is the director of the County Solid Waste and Recycling Division and we're also joined by, with Jacqueline Kerr. She's with the Gel Corporation and they are the county's contractor for recycling materials. So we're over here um, in the studio to show some of the different examples of things we can recycle. Uh, most of the stuff on our table is recyclable. There's one item that is no longer being able to recycle and we'll show you that in a minute. So everything here on the table as we mentioned is stuff that we want to encourage people to recycle it's everyday household products so we have we have the milk jug what should folks do with the milk jug before they put it in the bin i would just say make sure it's empty rinse it out and one of the reasons for rinsing it out is because recycling comes every week yes and, and of course at your household you don't want it to um, smell up your garage or attract any kinds of bugs. And then we have, you know, your your soda cans, of course, and then you have your, your cans of, of soup or vegetables. And again, we want to have a, a rinse out. We don't want to keep food in here because not just for the, the smell factor of your recycle bin, but again, the contamination aspect. Remind us of what happens with the contamination. So if the can of soup is full and it came into the recycling center and it's spilt all over other material we would have to throw that material away because the food is a contaminant to recycling so it would m contaminate other material all right and then of course we have again the the creamer jug and all people really need to do that reminder is to look on the bottom of the plastics because it has the number one or two. And in the past, it was, for Volusia County Unincorporated residents, it was one through, one through seven. seven. One through seven. And that's the big change coming up uh, starting this year is it's only gonna be ones and twos. So for, for sometimes you might have to get the magnifying glass out. I, I know I've done that a couple times and you find that number and if it's, if it's the one or the two, put it in the bin, make sure it's clear. You're still doing the newspapers, yes. correct? This paper, correct. What, uh, any changes with, with the papers? No, the, the papers will remain the same. Newspaper, snack boxes. If you do cereal boxes, please remove the liner that the cereal comes in. And of course, we're continuing to recycle cardboard as well. But one, one difference with the cardboard is in the past, we did accept pizza boxes, but because of the the food contamination, let's leave out the greasy pizza boxes. Yeah, because as you mentioned, it gets contaminated and then other things in the bin get contaminated and then all that recycling that you've worked so hard to do um, is for is for not because then it that contamination happens. We have we have the, the pop the pop uh, bottle, the soda bottle, and then we have the water bottle. Tell me what happens with water bottles when they get recycled. These are these are a one use item. So yes, this is a single use plastic, but we we ship these to a mill that spins it into a fiber, and they make clothing, they make 
fiber in your carpets and they make filling for furniture. So that's uh, that's one thing to do with, with water bottles. Uh, another alternative, if you're talking about uh, reducing, is to move towards the reusable water bottles and fill up your own water bottle, but at least it's good to know what those go for. I'm going to grab one of these cans again. You, you told me something earlier about recycling with cans. Talk about the life cycle of a can for when someone buys something at the store uh, so aluminum cans. So yeah. this is steel. Okay. And this, your aluminum cans would be your soda cans. Those okay. Have a life cycle of 60 days. So if you put this in your recycle bin today, in about two months, you should be able to see that same can will be on the grocery store shelf. They are infinitely recyclable, so they don't lose any of their properties when you recycle metal. So that's probably something good for consumers to think about if there's an option to buy something in a can versus a plastic, then and and recycling is very important to them. Even though the water bottles are recycling, it's it's a, a longer, like you said, a continuous recycling method with the with the cans versus with the water bottles. So this was our one item that we have on the table. Um, it's a plastic container, but it has that number five on the bottom. And for again, for the unincorporated residents here in Volusia County, only ones and twos are now available. And then we also have this um, just paper. It's a book, but we encourage people to recycle their books. Yes, you can put that in the recycle bin also. Yes. And I think it's, it's good to mention that uh, while these changes are going into effect for the unincorporated residents here in Volusia County, uh, there may be changes uh, in the future for folks that live in the cities. And so we encourage them to check out their city websites, call their um, call their city administrations to see, or they'll, they'll be notified as well. You'll talk about the time frame that you are working on to notify the residents and unincorporated about changes. Yes, for unincorporated Volusia County, the residents should start seeing some information in the beginning of February so that everybody is well notified and we can get these changes into place. and. The county as a whole, we're going back to the basics and focusing on core recyclables. So if people want more information about recycling in general, um, maybe about you know different options that they have, what, what resources do you recommend? Yes, they can always visit the Volusia County website, volusia.org slash recycle for all their recycling information, or they can call us directly at 386-943-7889. And again, residents that reside in city limits can also check the city's website. All right, well, Regina Montgomery, the Solid Waste and Recycling Director for Volusia County, and Jacqueline Kerr with Gel Recycling, thank you so much for being here today and great information. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you. And we'll be back in just a minute. Whoa, why did you throw the trash out the window? Once. Don't you know how long it takes litter to decompose? A cigarette butt takes one to five years. A plastic bag, 10 to 20 years. A glass bottle, a million years. You know, you're right. We should start caring more about the environment. Let's stop litter now. Keep Volusia County beautiful. Put litter in its place. Drive, Drive it home. It's a good idea for private well owners to test their water at least annually. Most water in private wells is naturally clean and ready to drink. But sometimes, like during a major storm, chemicals and bacteria can leak into groundwater. These contaminants could make you sick, and they can only be detected with lab tests. Fortunately, routine water testing is simple and inexpensive, and it's the best way to protect your family's health. Learn more at floridahealth.gov slash wells test. Welcome back to Volusia Magazine. Today we are talking about the three R's, reduce, reuse, and recycle. And even with our best efforts, not everything can be recycled. So that's why now we're talking with Katrina Locke. She is the Sustainability and Natural Resources Director for Volusia County. Hi, Katrina. Hi, Joanne. Thank you for being here. So let's talk about reducing and reusing. Going green is really a term that a lot of people use. and. For some, it can be kind of overwhelming to think, what does it mean to go green? But you're going to tell us about some easy lifestyle changes that pe people can do 
to have a less of a, of a carbon footprint. Yeah, so I think the way to look at being green or being more sustainable is kind of like you said, just reducing your impact. So reducing the amount of stuff that you you know you have that you maybe don't really need mm -hmm. um, and reducing the impact on our natural resources. So things like you know when we're using energy and when we're using a lot of water. So, so looking at ways in which we can reduce those items. And then also, you know, instead of using something one time, uh, are, there, are there alternatives out there that can be used over and over again? So we're not just using it once and throwing it away um, and that goes you know it's a great time to talk about this especially just after the holidays where I know we've probably all got you know we've, we've with our best intentions we've purchased gifts for people and they've been you know items that we think people have needed and maybe they didn't you know so it's that whole idea of just in, of thinking a little bit more about those behaviors that we have that create that stuff. So let's go through some items so mm -hmm. one one item that we talk about that's you know our single use single-use plastics and yeah. uh, water bottles are a, a good example of a single-use plastic so and I'll t while while recycle while water bottles are recyclable mm -hmm. they're also one use so there's an enormous amount that's that's out there right um, so an alternative to reduce is to use a reusable water right. bottle. And I brought an example here. So this actually is, it's still plastic. I mean, there's obviously a lot of different metal alternatives out there. This is um, a plastic water bottle. It has recycled content in it and it can be recycled once it's used. The, th the reason I brought this one is to think about the idea that, you know, like you're saying, um, there are recycled bottles out there. You know, you use a one-time bottle and then you can recycle it. But in order for there to be a value in that recycling, which I think you've probably just talked about too, is the idea that there has to be a reuse for it afterwards and so this kind of closes that loop it creates that um, idea that there's um, a market for the plastic material in order to create another plastic mm -hmm. bottle from it mm -hmm. and then as I say once this is used it can go back into the recycling bin if it's no longer usable something happens to it and you can't keep using it it can be recycled again and put back into that system that loop and that's that's an easy change that people can make and and it's worth noting that if you fill it up with water and you have it with you all day mm -hmm. and then you continually fill up your water bottle then you're actually probably um, hydrating better being yeah. more healthier mm -hmm. because you're drinking more water and it's easier to do when it's right there in front of you and yeah. you have a, a container that's easy to, to refill right exactly and this one's actually a smaller one so it's a little bit easier to be you know to carry around as well and so you also have another another type of, so of just, cup yeah so coffee mugs you know I'm thinking about um, uh, when you get a coffee from the store, what type of mug is it coming in, you know, if it's coming in a plastic mug or with a plastic lid on it and it's a one-time use, you know, do you, can you recycle the lid if you do happen to get um, an, an item that is throwaway um, and, and does it require you taking it home maybe because potentially you're not going to be able to recycle it in the store. So maybe taking your own coffee mug in is a way of reducing that waste and, and sort of keeping all that out the environment. And so uh, what about when it comes to um, other ways that people can purchase items? What should people look for when they're in the store uh, that may be just a better, a better uh, product when it comes to when you're not when you're done with it when you have to throw it away so I think one of the things that we you know want to really encourage people to do is always think about well can I recycle it so a lot of the paper products you know if you're in the store and um, you're looking at a single-use plastic bag maybe you don't have any option you've got a lot of stuff you need to put it in a bag and you've forgotten your reusable bag um, and so you know is there an option to have a paper bag instead of that plastic bag and then if you do get that paper bag you know then can you use it again or, and but obviously it can be recycled afterwards as mm -hmm. long as it's still you know the clean paper so there's that option as well but then also you know if, if you do find yourself with a single-use plastic bag can you again reuse it and I think you probably already talked about this earlier is um, the idea that you know can it be taken back to the store for recycling mm -hmm. and so it's always that idea of you know can you can you make an area in your home where you start to collect those things that could potentially be recycled back to stores and not necessarily just go in your you know home recycling bin because it's not part of that recycling program and we just heard about um, a product where uh, I think it's the newspapers that right. are being recycled to be made somewhere here in Florida to be made into egg cartons yes. that you can buy here in Florida. Yeah. So it's taking the newspapers, putting it in your recycling bin, making sure it gets recycled. And then in, in turn, that same newspaper then is, is showing up at the store in, in another use. Yeah, and again, couple. it can be recycled. Yes, yeah, it's a great way of, and that's that whole idea of that continuing to keep something in that loop of, of use. 
So there is also a lot of ways to reduce around the house. Um, let's start with, I guess, water. So when you're looking at something like water conservation, there are some um, options you can look at. You know, look at your faucets, low flow faucets. I mean, the thing to start off with is, is look at what type of um, gallons per minute is the flow rate through your faucets. Um, and then there's options out there to put air, something called an aerator on that faucet. But obviously you want to use an aerator that's lower than what your actual faucet is currently um, releasing water at. So um, if the flow rate is um, over two gallons, which I think 2.2 might be the sort of the, the limit that you're allowed to do in a kitchen faucet. Um, so you want to do something lower than that, and then that, and you can go down to one. And there's there's aerators at 0.5 gallons per minute. So if you are using water and you have a water bill, that's a great way to reduce the obviously the cost of your water bill. And it might be just pennies every time you use it, but over mm -hmm. time that adds up you know, to dollars, mm -hmm. um, but also if you're heating that water, so if you're running hot water through that faucet, then you're not only using water, but you're using energy as well. So you gotta think about your electricity bill. And even if you don't have a water bill and you have a well, you're still using energy because you're pulling that water from your well. Mm -hmm. So you can, you know, sort of start thinking about, oh, you know, you see people often just with the tap running and they're not really doing anything. They might be talking to the person next to them, mm -hmm. but they're at the sink with the tap running. And you gotta think about that's basically they're running those the water down the sink and potentially that heated water down the sink too. So, and it's not just that it's not just water. the water bill. Uh, and there's also the water that we should consume. Water is a precious natural exactly. resource, especially here right. in Florida. Yeah, so I mean, we don't want to just waste water either. So I think there's, there's ways to look at that. So obviously this will do both of those things. It's going to save you pennies and, and uh, ultimately dollars, um, but also conserve water too. Some of the other things you can do, so this is another one here. This is an actual shower head. Um, so looking at, it's rather um, mm -hmm. different shape, but looking at this, um, this is a 1.5 gallon per minute shower head um, and it can be altered based on how you want the flow to come mm -hmm. through, um, but really reducing the amount of water that you have running through your shower. Um, and then something that's a little bit of fun is um, a shower timer mm -hmm. and you can get these in different different um, ways you know some of them are digital this is just like an egg an old egg timer mm -hmm. um, and so the idea is that this is a five minute timer and you know you get in the shower and you have less than the five minutes so you're trying to beat the timer and obviously you know the more sand that's at the top the better because you've had an even shorter shower um, and with kids you know this can be fun because you can sort of who can have the quickest shower while being clean and leaving yeah. the shower you Pro know so probably it's fun, fun when they're younger and as yeah. they get to teens they're, they're not going to think pen, that's fun. Yeah, no. <laughs> so this is, but this is a good way of trying to sort of think about reducing the amount of water you use in the shower. Some of the other things you can do um, from an energy perspective is um, with your clothes washer is, you know, look at washing on cold water um, unless, of course, you have to sanitize something then mm -hmm. obviously, you know, you're going to have to use hotter water, but um, looking at using uh, the the washers set on cold water settings. A lot of washers are designed to do that, and the newer ones, and then obviously the detergents operate in that mm -hmm. cold water too. So, so good energy saving. So now, uh, let's talk about straws for a little bit. Yeah. Straws have gotten a lot of attention. Um, they're real little, they're mm -hmm. small, but they're, they're numerous. They're everywhere, mm -hmm. and the problem with straws is that a lot of times they don't make they whether well, they can't be recycled, mm -hmm. and a lot of times they don't make trash cans. They end up in the water stream, mm -hmm. and then they end up um, affecting affecting wildlife. So, uh, get, tell us some of the stories that that back up the what happens with straws and some of the initiatives that are out there to change that behavior. So yeah, like as you were saying, there are impacts that occur to um, wildlife based on straws from ingesting straws, um, which is obviously never a good thing. Um, and then just the fact that they're in the environment in general, you know, that there's a lot of straws um, being used on a daily basis here. And um, a lot of them don't make it, as you say, to the, to the trash and end up in our waterways, um, causing issues to wildlife in general. So some of the things that you can think about when you're looking at straws, um, is and, and some of the options that are out there and incentives and, and programs are to look at reducing the straw. So saying no to a straw. So a lot of restaurants will now ask you or won't offer you a straw. You either have to ask for one or they may ask you if you'd like one rather than just automatically mm -hmm. giving you one, which is great um, because that sort of removes that whole, oh, I've got a straw in my drink and I really didn't want one, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and the other option, there's some other options out there as far as um, looking at ways in 
in which you can, um, if you must use a straw, ways in which you can reduce the impact of, of using a straw. So either have one that you can use multiple times, like this metal straw. Um, there are glass options out there. There's also bamboo and different materials yeah. too. So there's the option to use a straw that you can use over and over again. You gotta remember to take it with you. Put it, you know, some of them have nice little cases. Mm -hmm. You can make your own little case. Mm -hmm. Keep it in your, you know, your purse if you've got a purse or your, you know, whatever you're carrying around with you. But just to remember to, um, to take it with you each time and or refuse a straw in, in general. And um, just on a personal note, so I have the metal straws at home. I also have some paper straws because yeah. one of my sons uh, just doesn't like the way the metal straw feels. Yeah. So I got the paper straws and at least that, you know, is something right. that can break down. But one of my friends showed me, uh, she made a case and uh, it was, it's a toothbrush a travel toothbrush holder oh. that just happens to fit the metal straws so she can put them in there and she either puts it in her purse or I would keep them in my car and then and then like you said if you need to have straws yeah. and a lot of times with small children you, yeah. you need to have straws uh, at least that's one way of, of helping that out. And I think that's a good, the good point that you mentioned is the paper straws are a great option too for people who have to have straws and, and can't, you know, maybe can't use the metal straw or, mm -hmm. the, uh, or you know, the other sort of harder straws. Mm -hmm. So for people that want to use less and be more green, uh, what are some resources out there? I know you have some programs at the Lyonia Environmental Center and mm -hmm. throughout the county, you, you try to promote green practices. So what are some ways that people can, can get some information? Yeah, so um, Green Volusia um, is the county's website for um, all our green practices. So there's some information on that and also the programs I'm about to mention to you are listed on that site too. So, you know, Lyonia Environmental Center, they have monthly programs where you can learn more about um, gardening, um, more Florida friendly practices in your gardening, uh, ways in which you can reduce water use by um, you know, creating a rain barrel, those type of things. So there's a lot of different programming going on at Lyonia that you can really learn more about green practices in your lifestyle. Um, and then um, the Marine Science Center, you know, learn a little bit about what's going on, some of the impacts of, mm -hmm. uh, as you mentioned, with plastic straws and other mm -hmm. issues. Um, and then Explore Volusia, which is one of the county's programs that are out and about in conservation lands, where you can learn more about the conservation lands but also within that learn about some of the natural resources and the issues and, and sustainability as well in those programs. But then beyond the county's facilities, the Marine Discovery Center in New Smyrna, you know, they, they have programming on sustainability and sustainable practices too. And I know the, the city of New Smyrna Beach, they're, they're really um, moving ahead with a lot of greener practices. A lot of businesses have, uh, have joined forces with, mm -hmm. the, with the Tourism Bureau to, to bring more awareness to uh, being a greener community. Because if you're greener, it helps the community as, as a whole. Yeah, and I think it's like looking at this from the sort of the perspective of, you know, looking at the environment and the impacts we have on our environment and how that then impacts the economy and, you know, and at the end of the day, all of us. So, you know, how, how do these things all go together and, and, you know, make it a better place to be and, and to live? And you're right, and from the New Smyrna Beach perspective, the Chamber has um, a subcommittee that they're working on, which, which is an environmental subcommittee, which is a great thing to hear, you know, that they're, they're moving forward sure. to strives on that. And looking at some of these issues, with the single-use plastics and, and how we can sort of reduce those and remove them from, from our lifestyles a little bit. All right, so get the metal straws and put them in your car. Get those uh, reusable grocery bags. Stick, Which, them in, yeah. stick them in your car so that you're ready to go. At, yeah, and this is actually... They work great. They're strong. Yeah. All right, well, Katrina Locke, Sustainability and Natural Resources Director for Volusia County, thank you so much for the information today. Thank you, Joanne. And thank you for joining us for this edition of Volusia Magazine. We hope to see you next time.